It's not even controversial anymore. People know in Florida their freedoms are going to be respected. Miranda, greetings. Greetings. Wow, it seems like Ron DeSantis is maybe back in Trump's good graces, maybe a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. I don't know. Um, at a town hall on Tuesday, he was kind of asked if he had a short list for who he'd want his vice president, vice presidential candidates to be. And he said yes. And so um, the host of the town hall had asked, like, or had given a list of names and DeSantis was included. And he says, yes, they're all on my list. They're all strong, solid people. So we'll see what happens. I mean, there is a 12th Amendment right that I actually just learned about that the president and the vice president can't live in the same state. So one of them would have to move. And so, it can't be DeSantis because he's our governor. Now, so. let me debunk that for you, Miranda. Oh, OK. Debunk it. Yeah. Was, sorry. See, this know. is a lesson in real time. That's all right. You're not a politics oh. person. Technically... It's it was framed for a different time in this country, but basically you can you can still okay. run from the same state as president and vice president on the same ticket. The only time it would become problematic is if it were so close that Florida's um, votes were the ones that were going to make or break the election, and then you would run into a tricky situation. You can do it, but it's not like blatantly disallowed as some people believe. So just little known Understand fact. I, Understandable now. Yes. I, I don't necessarily think it's a good idea either way to have someone from the same state. Yeah. I just I just don't think that that's appealing to the widest range of people. I think DeSantis is too close politically to Donald Trump. He needs someone who's going to bring in other people to the mix. And I just don't see DeSantis being that person. Yeah. All right. As we talk about the ups and downs of the legislative session in Olympia, uh, let's see what's happening in your legislative session. The Senate has passed a bill in Florida that would teach <laughs> kindergartners about the threats of communism. Yes. So this bill would basically, well, right now, I mean, in most schools, I think across the country, they teach a little bit of communism from seventh grade on up through civics and social studies classes. But this would have lessons as young as kindergarten um, to teach. And it says that they would have to be age and developmentally appropriate. I don't know how you make the topic of communism age appropriate for a kindergartner, but um, yeah, so they're going to start teaching them early about the threats of communism. Yeah, I mean, I guess like you could take the kid could bring lunch to school. You could take everyone's lunch who brought it to school and then you divvy it up equally among people, including the little kids who didn't bring their lunch to school and just, you know, public property. Yeah. So there's some lessons, maybe with some blocks or something that you could incorporate. I think this is silly. I don't know how you would teach a meaningfully age appropriate lesson to kindergartners about socialism. Yeah. And uh, or communism, I think, right? um, Florida in itself, I think is a little special when it comes, especially South Florida, because we have so many like immigrants from Cuba and people who have family members that were like directly under the influence of communism. So yeah. I think some of that does get taught at home actually already pretty early. And a lot of these people are the ones kind of speaking out in favor of this bill. Um, but I think as you go a little farther north, it might not hit as close to home for some people, the com the conversation of communism to yeah. children. I just don't know what good it's going to do a kindergartner. You know, wait till they're old enough to grasp some of the concepts that you're trying to teach them. I, I just think that's kind of strange. Um, OK, we're having a lot of conversations and debates and lies in Washington state around funding for environmental issues. So in Florida, there is an interesting um, uh, bill under consideration that would use gambling money for environmental projects. Yeah, correct. So back in 2021, um, DeSantis had reached an agreement with the Seminole Tribe of Florida um, that would basically allow them to offer sports betting throughout the state in addition to some like in casino games like craps. Um, and in exchange for that, they would do kind of like a pledge of some of those funds that they're now making off of these, these new games they're offering um, up to like $2.5 billion over the period of the first five years, and then the pact goes about three decades. Um, they've already paid about $58 million of that, and all these funds are being appropriated to all types of environmental things in Florida, from sea, like preventing sea rise issues, um, expanding the wildlife corridor, protecting our endangered local species, and also helping rid and control the population of invasive species, water treatment, 
all types of stuff. So it, it, I think it's kind of interesting that they were, were able to find so much money to help with these things in our state. Yeah, without stealing it from working class people at the gas pump and then lying about it. Wow, imagine that, Florida really on the cutting edge of public service. All right, yeah. Miranda, we appreciate it. Your hair looks so blonde. Did you dye it blonder? No, it's just getting very sunny out, so I get my natural blonde down here. <laughs> Sorry I asked. I don't want to hear crap about the sun in Florida. All right, Miranda, appreciate it. Bye. It's not even controversial anymore. People know in Florida their freedoms are going to be respected.